Ever since the rise of franchises like Battlefield, Medal of Honor, military video games have been super popular. Now some embrace a more ridiculous tone, but others, they're all about realism. Welcome to the channel everybody, Chaos here. Today we're going to be looking at some of the most realistic military games of all time. Now you let me know which of these you played the most, and I'm going to challenge you to give at least one new game from this list a try once you're done watching. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and we're going to start off with Verdun. Verdun? Verdun? Outside of Battlefield 1. Now, there haven't been many mainstream games set during the First World War, but if you're looking for the objectively best, then uh, Verdun, I think is how you say it, may be it. Released in 2015, after some time on Early Access, it beat Battlefield 1 to the market. It did, by a whole year. And it's also a first-person shooter that throws you into the year 1916. Inspired by the Battle of Verdun, the game is incredibly accurate to history, features authentic weapons, uniforms, but it does not shy away from the absolutely brutal, just the brutal combat of that time. Brutality uh, was insane. And all the maps are based on real life battlefields from the war as well. The multiplayer shooter was beloved by the PC community. It got a PS4 and Xbox port a couple years later, but it actually got ports to the PS5 and the Series X last year. So if you're a fan of Battlefield 1, you wanted something a little less frantic, maybe more strategic, go give it a try. Something else you guys need to give a try is G2A.com. Link is at the top description. Use code CHAOS. Get yourself some cash back on anything you purchase on the site. And now we go to Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis. Now, if you guys are familiar with the Arma franchise, you may have heard of this game, but there's a chance you've never played it because of its age. Now, Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis was released all the way back in 2001 for the PC and then 2005 for the Xbox. Not sure why there was a four-year gap, but okay. Despite being 20 years old, it's actually extremely realistic. It's a tactical shooter with wildly different gameplay depending on the faction and the role you're playing with. I mean, some are more aggressive, others play it like a strategy game. It was actually later re-released as an Arma game after the developer shifted gears. But if you ever wanted to play the precursor to PC gaming's finest military simulator, check it out. It actually aged surprisingly well. Next up, Ready or Not. Now, this game was in development for a long, long time. It is essentially the long-awaited sequel to the SWAT series that you may have played back in the early 2000s. Ready or Not is a tactical FPS with a, let's just say the focus is on extreme realism. It plays a group of SWAT agents performing operations in a fictional U.S. city. You can be killed by almost anything instantly. If you make a single mistake but the tactics are used, you could go down. It's also very true to life. I mean, there's a wide array of non-lethal weapons at your disposal and the game awards you for taking suspects into custody instead of killing them outright. Now, some reviewers have called Ready or Not a tactical horror game because of how incredibly tense it is, which is kind of the point. So uh, I guess you can say the developer succeeded. The game is currently exclusive to PC, but hopefully console ports are coming in the near future so more people can experience this tactical FPS. We're going to stick with the, the vibe of realism. Rising Storm 2, Vietnam. Now, the Vietnam War doesn't have a lot of video games. It doesn't, which is weird, because for a while, it was one of the most popular settings for the military genre. Rising Storm 2 is a class-based tactical FPS. It's set during the Vietnam War, and it features battles with up to 64 players. The graphics are beautiful. The sound design, it's immersive. The weapon and map design are also very true to that time period, and it all comes together to make something that's pretty addicting and educational in its own way. You have to play the game differently depending on what faction you're playing as, and you really have to use the map to your advantage. Now, the community isn't as big as it used to be, but you can still find populated servers pretty easily. So if you're looking for something new on the PC, Rising Storm 2. Next up, Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad. Deli released in 2011, Red Orchestra 2 is a tactical World War II multiplayer shooter developed by Tripwire Interactive. You, you may know them. They're the makers of Killing Floor 2. Now, RO2 is actually the precursor to Rising Storm 2, and it features similar attention to detail in that immersive gameplay. Maps, once again, support up to 64 players, and the devs did their best to keep this thing to, uh, I, I mean, as true to life as possible. It mainly focuses on the Battle of Stalingrad, and now that we've talked about a few of those, I think it's safe to say the game takes a heavy influence from a single battle, and those are the best. Despite being over 10 years old, there's people playing this game, and it's usually pretty cheap on Steam, so give it a try, come back, and tell us what you think. If you're a fan of multiplayer World War II shooters, I think this is one of the mo most realistic ones on the market. Now, let's talk about VBS2. 
and it was developed by Bohemia Interactive. Yes, that's the name of it, VBS-2. It's a military simulator that was actually used by the U.S. Army as a training tool. Released in 2007, it's a first-person experience, and it is incredibly true to life, which shouldn't be a shocker because the VBS literally stands for Virtual Battle Space. Now, it was developed in cooperation with the United States military, and while it may not be the most fun experience in the world, it's probably one of the most realistic I've ever seen. I mean, if the game is literally used for training soldiers, you should probably expect it to be incredibly realistic. I'm not sure if I'd recommend it to people looking for a good time because it's very educational. I mean, if you want to know more about how the military works or you want a closer virtual look at modern military tech, this is for you. Now, it's a tad dated, but it's pretty interesting and worth a check out. This next one I've played all the way through. Insurgency Sandstorm. It's been getting traction in recent years and it deserves it. It's a large-scale multiplayer shooter with a limited HUD and a strong reliance on player communication. It's set in a fictional Middle Eastern country, and the game features modern tech and weaponry, and it portrays a conflict between fictional factions inspired by real-world counterparts. The animations, they're probably some of the most fluid in any multiplayer shooter I've seen, and the gameplay can be very tense. I mean, it's a game full of eye candy. It should definitely be played on next-gen console or a high-end PC if you can't. You're not going to be disappointed. Now, with versions available on almost every platform, Insurgency is quickly becoming one of the most popular alternatives to games like Battlefield or Call of Duty, and I get it. It's almost four years out on the market, and it's finally getting some love. This next one I'm going to bet half of you have never heard of. Post Scriptum, released on the PC in 2018. It's a tactical FPS, it's set during the Second World War, and it's developed by Periscope Games. Now, it was originally made as a mod for a game called Squad, which we'll talk about a little later, but then it was spun off into its own project, and that's probably a good thing, because it's a very impressive game. Now, there's a number of playable factions, each with their own units, their own weaponry, and the gameplay is very similar to uh, uh, that of a game that it was originally a mod for. Jack Frags made a great video about Postscript, and while it's not nearly as populated as its modern-day counterpart... It's worth a download. I mean, just go look at the detail. It's one of the closest things to a World War II simulator I've ever seen. It's a shame, though. It's only multiplayer. A single-player campaign would have been absolutely amazing. Enlisted. That's the name of the game, Enlisted. A more recent release. Enlisted dropped on PC and console in March of 2021. The kicker? It's completely free to play. Squad-based game, as most World War II shooters are for some reason, and each squad can have up to three to nine people in it. Every class has its own unique weapons, and there will even be some AI teammates running around, but one cool thing about Enlisted is the fact you can actually jump from a character to another character, which allows you to get a different perspective on the battlefield, while also giving orders to the AI teammates around you. It's immersive. It's also a number of vehicles you can ride around in, you can turn the tide of battle, you fight on these huge maps on the eastern and western fronts of the war. Now, the game got really bad reviews at first, but it has a passionate community. It's worth a try. The visuals and gameplay... It's good, and once again, it's free to play. Next up, Hell Let Loose. Now, some of you were probably waiting for me to talk about this one, and you were probably ready to roast me if it didn't make the list. It's one of the most popular tactical shooters out right now, and it's frequently compared to Postscriptum thanks to the World War II setting and the incredibly realistic gameplay. It was successfully crowdfunded in 2017, finally got its 1.0 release in 2021 on PC and consoles, and it's a multiplayer-only tactical FPS that also features elements of real-time strategy. You have to keep an eye on resources, and the two teams fighting will have a single commander who's in charge of troop and vehicle deployments. Those on the ground, they have to be in constant communication with each other, and the commander needs to make sure that their team has everything they need to continue the battle while also rationing the equipment so they're not left exposed later in the conflict. It is rapidly becoming one of the most popular World War II games on the market, and you should give it a try. Current gen or PC. Now let's get into Call of Duty. Yes, Call of Duty's on the list. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. Now I know, Call of Duty may be known for its insane set pieces and its ridiculous over-the-top action, but the 2019 reboot? Come on. It had an incredibly realistic single-player campaign, which is the main reason I'm excited for the sequel to come out. It featured some of the most tense moments in the now iconic Clean House mission. I mean, you go room to room in this very, very small apartment building, and it's... It's intense. It really, really is. You take out the hostiles, you make snap decisions on who you have to engage. So yes, the multiplayer is ridiculous and the spec ops mode is insane, but Modern Warfare's campaign, it was extremely realistic. I think it deserves to be on this list. At number four, I told you we talk about this earlier. Squad, first released in early access in 2015, 
has slowly but surely become Battlefield's main competitor on PC. And after the failure of Battlefield 2042, here it is. An explosion in popularity on Steam, as the name implies. Squad is based around communication and teamwork as you and your buddies take part in a larger conflict on giant maps. When I say giant, up to 14 square miles. It's similar to Hell Let Loose. It's a single player, commander, take care of things, UAV deployments, artillery strikes, stuff like that. It's essentially a successor to the Project Reality mods. It is now seen by many as an all-around improvement of Battlefield's gameplay skeleton. So if you're missing classic Battlefield, but you want something a little more detailed, give Squad a try. I mean, with how popular the game has become on PC, I think, I think console ports are right around the corner. Next up, Escape from Tarkov. I don't know why I said it like that. Escape from Tarkov. Tarkov may not be your traditional military game, but it has realism. And it clearly took influence from other military shooters. Instead of featuring two armies fighting, it features small squads of soldiers entering a war-torn area and attempting to loot what they can and escape in one piece. One and done, people. The combat's intense. The healing system may be one of the most realistic I've seen in an FPS game. You have to manage everything. Your stamina, your bones are broken, you have to know how to stop your bleeding if you're injured in a fight. I mean, your controls will be altered to better represent how your character is now moving. Escape from Tarkov is a very hardcore game with a huge learning curve, but I'm excited. I'm also excited for EFT Arena to come out because I want to see the mechanics in a faster paced environment. And I'm excited for Modern Warfare's take, Call of Duty's take with their DMZ mode. Two games left. Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. Now the Brothers in Arms is a franchise that put Gearbox software on the map. The studio got its start making expansions and ports for the original Half-Life, but Brothers in Arms Road to 30 Hill, or Hill 30, sorry, was their first original title. It didn't disappoint. World War II shooter again, heavy emphasis on squad commands and thinking ahead before running into engagements. In the game tutorial, it puts a lot of focus on the four Fs, those being find, fix, flank, and finish. Now, the, it's not like dodgeball. The shooting was intentionally made to be rather inaccurate, so you would focus more on your positioning and forward planning, and that, that added a lot of levity to the realism. Road to Hill 30 was released on the PC, the PS2, and the Xbox in 2005. It was critically acclaimed. The story, the gameplay, the presentations, and then a few months later, the History Channel actually used it to recreate certain battles in the appropriately titled special Brothers in Arms. Now, if the History Channel is using your game for reference, guess what? Thumbs up. You did a good job. And the final most realistic military game of all time has to be Arma 3. Often called one of the best PC exclusives on the market. It released in 2013 and remains to this day one of the biggest games on Steam. Developed and published by Bohemia Interactive, it's an open world tactical shooter with an extreme emphasis on realism and options. I mean, the biggest map in the game covers over 100 square miles. There's over 100,000 mods available. And if you're not going to be overwhelmed by the amount of content in the base game... Well, okay, it has a massive experience made all the more addicting by the stunning visuals in the borderline simulation gameplay. People joke that there's over 100 ways for your character to stand in Arma 3, but that's not far from the truth. Arma 3 is an amazing game. It's a testament as to what can be done with the medium of video games. Now with Arma 4 in development, I'm excited to see what the team cooks up. They have a very, very tall order on their hands, but if anyone can outdo Arma 3, it's probably Bohemia Interactive. And there you have it. Some of the most realistic shooters on the market. Let me know one that didn't make the list and I'll see you soon.